today we're going to talk about two lights from Zhuin that are very similar yet very different. We have the CF100 right here, which is an 100 watt LED wand light. And then we have the C100 right here, which is very similar. It is more like a tube light that is 100 watts, but the price on these are a little bit different and the functionality on these are a little bit different, which is why I want to thank Zhuin for sending both of these lights out so I can do this comparison today. The C100 right here is the more professional light of the two and is more useful if it's used within the Zhuin light ecosystem. So if you have multiple Zhuin lights, this is a great addition, kind of like an Astero tube or an Aperture Infinibar. This can give you really cool RGB lighting effects and you can control this remotely where the CF100 is a really cool wand light that can be handheld unlike this C100. However, there is no app control. Everything is controlled by a basic system here on the back. So if you're not part of the Zhuin ecosystem, but are looking for a really affordable wand light that has RGB and effect functionality, well, this may be what you're looking for as well. So let's get a little bit more in depth, starting with the C100. So here is the C100. I have it in the RGB mode. And as I said before, it's very similar to an Infinibar or an Astera tube, even though this isn't quite a tube light. It's more in between a tube light and a wand light. These lights aren't meant to be held. They're actually meant to be mounted or used in conjunction with multiple versions of the C100. There are multiple areas to mount this light. You can mount it on a quarter inch on the bottom here. You can mount it on a quarter inch on the other side right here. And then in the carrying case that comes with the C100, there's a little mounting kit that I have right here. And you just attach it to this little area right here on the back. And it gives you even more mounting options. You can mount it from the back right here. You can mount it from the top here. You can move this around anywhere in the metal area. You even reverse it if you want to mount it this way. So the big thing with the C100 is the versatility. This is a very versatile light. And it doesn't just do RGB. It, of course, does bicolor. It does effects. One of the really cool effects that I used on set, I'll go over to the effects mode right here, was the one chase mode. And this we used to replicate uh, on the Star Trek bridge one of the computer devices out of focus, of course, where you can't really tell what this is, and it ended up being a practical prop on set. This is such a simple effect, yet for some of the work I do, very necessary. And of course, it's got a tons of other effects as well, but that's the thing with these lights. If you're in the Zhuin ecosystem and you want to be able to use these, maybe put these in a weird place and just control them all via an app, Zhuin has a really great app like a lot of the lighting companies out there today. You kind of need one in replace of a DMX controller. Back in the day, we would have a DMX controller where we control everything from, and it would be hardwired, where now everything is able to be wireless, and with that, you can just use your phone to control everything. So that's really the big selling point of this. It's an 100-watt light. It has a built-in battery. You can charge it via power delivery, USB-C, which it has a port right here for, and you can also charge it via a DC adapter. Now this light comes with a DC adapter, not with a USB-C power delivery cord. So if you do wanna charge it via power delivery, just make sure you have your own cord, but most of us do these days. The charging speed's gonna depend on what you supply to the actual light itself. So if you don't have a powerful enough power delivery charger, I would just stick with the DC. The C100 has four buttons in total. It has two buttons right here. It's got a power button and it's got the mode button, which obviously the mode button change through, cycle through the modes. And then it's got two dials right here. And the dials will just cycle through, change your settings, do whatever. It's a little bit more advanced than the CF100 that only has two buttons on it. But the CF100 is made to be the cheaper, more simple, less professional light where this just gives you a lot more options with its controllability, whether you're going to control it via the buttons on the actual light itself or the app. So aside from functionality, there's a few other things that separate the C100 from the CF100. One is going to be this carrying case. The C100 comes with this nice carrying case, and it also has some diffusion in it. We go into the case right here. It's got directional grid diffusion. Let's undo this right here. You can just attach this to the front and you have your grid diffusion that you can make sure it doesn't spill everywhere. It also has cloth diffusion, which I'll go grab right here. And you can just make your light a little bit softer. 
The CF100 has one of these as well, which I'll show you in a second, but it's nice to see that there are just different options, especially if you're going to use this light by itself. Uh, and you want to use it as maybe a key light, a fill light. That's the cool part about these lights. In certain situations, you can totally use it as a key light. Me personally, I've used it more as a fill light and as a practical light, but it really just depends. On set, I didn't use it as a key light because I wanted to have a huge lighting source. As you can see from some of these videos, I used an 120 centimeter softbox so I can just have the biggest light source I could bring on set and set up myself. And that's the thing with these. With this diffusion, it definitely makes it softer. There really aren't accessories for this that can give you the size of an 120 centimeter softbox, but that's not really what these are for. These are really more supplemental lights within the ecosystem itself. So now let's talk about the CF100. Again, this is an 100 watt light and it's got fans on the back right here, unlike the C100 that actually doesn't have the fan showing quite as much. They're more hidden behind this silver display, but they're a little bit different because the CF100 is meant to be held, or at least you can hold it, unlike the C100. So on set, I actually Hollywooded this light, uh, which is a term basically when you're just holding it in somewhere. And uh, I Hollywooded this light to just get some cool color effects. I also use this as a fill light as well, just to test it out. Again, because I use the bag diffusion, which I actually have right here. And it's actually not too hard to set up. Um, it took me a second to see how they did it, but you take the bag light, you put it over the light right here, and then you drag this down here over the other two side reflectors. And then the only annoying part is then you have to move the reflectors while this thing's over, which I actually brought it a little bit too far over right here. So here we go. There we go. And brought it on the bottom here. As you can see, it works. It just does take some time. And that's probably the only con I would say with this light, the bag diffusion, but it's not really much easier on the C100 either. And sometimes you need this kind of bag diffusion just so your lighting isn't as harsh. If you're lighting people, diffusion's really important. Let's talk about the buttons on the back. The buttons are a little bit more simple on this CF100, but they're also more challenging to use. So on the back of the CF100, there is just this rotating wheel, and then there's the power button. And then where you click the rotating wheel, whether it's the top, bottom, left, or right side, depends on what mode you're doing. So there's the effects mode right here. There's the dim mode right here, which brings you back to uh, CCT. There's the HSI mode down here, which is the RGB. And then when I go back into dim, if you hold this top button, it's gonna bring you into the max mode. And as you can tell, all of a sudden it got really bright. Now again, one of the main differences between this light and the C100 when it comes to output is even though they're both 100 watt lights, the C100 is a little bit brighter than the CF100. But if you're not in the Zhiyun ecosystem and you need an RGB wan light, well, you're probably not going to be using the app because you may have another ecosystem or you just may not be using apps at all. This light's going to make a lot more sense. It's a lot cheaper. I'm not going over the price because they keep fluctuating. I'll have links to everything in the description below, but this is a cheap and affordable light. And it's very simple. Just like the C100, it actually can charge via USB power delivery or a DC input. The CF100 comes with a power delivery cable and not a DC input. So if you want to charge this via a DC input, you're going to have to buy one or use something you already own. Otherwise, use the power delivery cable. It's got a built-in battery. So when it comes to which one of these lights I would recommend, it really comes down to what you want out of the light. Are you going to use multiples of these lights together to create bigger light sources or bigger effects? Or are you trying to use this as part of the Zhiyun ecosystem? Well, then the C100 is definitely the better option. It's the more professional option. It's got better lighting outputs. Uh, it's got more controllability. So this is the more professional option, although it is more expensive. If none of that appeals to you, but you want a light that's simple, easy to use, and has RGB options, well, the CF100 is a really great option. Although the CF100 doesn't come with a carrying case like the C100, it does come with this little pouch accessory. And it's been nice because overall, it does pack away a lot more slim than the C100. You have this on the CF100, and then you've got 
this really big case on the C100, but of course, if I drop this thing, the C100 is going to be fine. You drop this, this probably isn't going to be fine. When it comes to the build quality of both of these lights, the C100 is definitely a lot better than the CF100. Again, more expensive light, but this feels like it's made out of more metal and a higher end plastic, where the CF100 is definitely just more plasticky feeling overall but it also feels a little bit lighter. So there is that as well. But I think the C100 is going to be more of a durable light. It also has the removable diffusion, as you can see right here. I now have it removed from the front where you can't do that on the C100. So again, it's why the C100 is the more professional light over the CF100. I keep harping on that, but not everyone needs the more professional light. But for those who do, that's the difference between these two. So I hope I was able to help you with figuring out what was the difference between both of these lights. I sure enjoyed looking uh, at both of these lights. I do really enjoy both of them. They just have slightly different use cases. If you have any questions on the CF100, C100 that I didn't go over in today's video, let me know in the comments below. And if you got knowledge and value out of today's video, please make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos from the channel. And until next time, thank you for watching, everybody. My name's Jeff Fagan, and I will catch you in the next video. Oh, 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 oh,